Good evening, friends. Today, we're going to join the dots for a clear picture of what happened in the Sushant case. With so much of evidence emerging, we have much more news about what's happening in the Sushant case. And we can finally put the pieces together in this gigantic jigsaw puzzle. It has taken over three months to find the truth. And yet, we, we are still waiting for the CBI and the other federal agencies to uh, give us more news about what they are doing at their end. This is a long talk. I hope you listen to it till the end. I've tried to explain things in a simple manner for all of you to understand what actually happened in the Sushant murder case. One thing I want you to understand is that there is a clear mission by foreign forces, especially Pakistan, to weaken India, not only through terrorism, but also through a proxy war. Here, unlike pushing arms, as they did during the Bombay riots, when Sanjay Dutt stocked weapons and was jailed for it, and which was followed by the 2611 uh, Terrorism Act. This is a proxy war we're talking about. It is through drug trafficking and human trafficking. Pakistan's intention is to weaken the moral fabric of India. And that can be done only by making the next generation hooked on drugs and sex. And this is called narco-terrorism, which can remove any positive influence on our youngsters, like focusing on their careers, loss of entity, cultural values, and patriotism, values that help in building a strong nation. The intense attack on drug suppliers, the peddlers, and users now has revealed the underbelly of not only Mumbai, but also the major cities in India. In our previous videos, we have explained the modus of operandi of how black money is pumped through Bollywood films and how shell companies are fronts for money laundering or hawala. We have spoken about this before, about how underworld dons directly deal with Bollywood uh, stars who own companies uh, that do uh, sex trafficking in the name of talent companies. The CEO of Guan himself used to molest women, which was exposed uh, through the Me Too movement. This itself was proof that women were not safe in Bollywood. And this company is owned by a superstar, as you know. I've explained this in the earlier video. Though the CEO was supposed to be sacked, it is said that he's still there in the background. And new people like Jaya Saha are working now there. Uh, you would remember, like, Jaya Saha rings a bell, the name rings a bell, because she was supplying drugs to Rhea, which was re revealed through the verified chats. Now, the brand management company, Cornerstone, where Shruti Modi works, is owned by Banti Sajdeh, who is related to Sohail Khan through his wife. Through the chats, we came to know that Shruti Modi was supplying drugs to parties and events at uh, hotels and private homes. This is why Shruti Modi, Jaya Saha, and Banti, owner of Cornerstone, were questioned by the federal agencies. Interestingly, Disha was earlier working for Kwan, but she left Kwan and joined uh, Cornerstone, maybe because she did not uh, like the work ethos in Kwan. And we would know what, uh, why Kwan is not seen in a good light. Hence, the link is very clear. Shell companies do money laundering. Talent companies are running escort services on the side where it looks obvious that drugs and sex are hand in hand. Brand management companies provide drugs for parties and events at hotels or private homes. So the money generated from within the country, that is India, is sent out by way of Havana, which is how Pakistan benefits. Honestone is also managing many cricketers. As we know, actresses get into relationship with cricketers. Some marry uh, them or some have just flings, of course. Other things like betting and match fixing also happens. But that is a subject for another video. Then comes the PR companies, where people like Rohini Ayer enter the scene. Please remember that she too was called by CBI. They will do the work of building or destroying stars, according to the instructions they receive. If the star has to be destroyed, corrupt media are paid to write blind articles against the star. 
So the star is branded as immoral, a drunk, a drug addict, and ill-tempered. Once the rumors are spread, people stop using the star in movies. They are then seen as depressed and encouraged to take more drugs, and then suddenly removed from the scene or found dead. For example, the recent interview with Ria, trying to build a sympathy wave, was beamed through India Today and uh, other uh, friendly channels. And anchors like Rajiv Sardesai were uh, hired and flown for this purpose. This was also followed by some interviews of Sandeep Singh to whitewash his character. Z News clearly said that they refused the money offered by Ria's lawyer, uh, Satish Manashinde, to run the interview based on a script that they had prepared and uh, which they had to say. All this failed. It does not end here. Film and trade magazines are paid to push or kill movies and put the final nail on the actor's career. Many stars end up pushing, uh, joining the escort service or quit their careers for good. This is a Pakistani agenda that Bollywood obliges. The Pakistanis exploit the greed of these people. I'm talking about the Bollywood biggies who love to flaunt Audis, diamonds, luxury homes, lavish parties and private jets. We have seen a lot of these people socializing with these friends of ISI. This greed that we find in the Bollywood stars can be only fulfilled by this kind of money, even if it means selling your soul to the devil and minting money. So while walls are fought and borders by our brave armed forces, internal turmoil created by drugs, sex and crime intended to make our society weak and immoral is being fought by public like us. People have become aware they cannot be quiet anymore. They need to fight this corrupt system because we fear for the coming generation. It's not only education, but inculcating patriotic values that are essential as other skills. Now the Sushant case has exposed so many evil people and a few good ones. Let us unravel the story according to the evidences that have come out and the numerous reports about the four main characters. That is Sushant Singh Rajput, Sandeep Singh, Riya Chakravarti and Disha Salyan. How destiny brought two very evil-minded people to destroy Sushant and Disha completely. What I'm saying now is everything is there in the public domain and in all the news reports. So these are all facts. This is how, and this is how I see it. It's my assessment of what happened to Sushant and Disha. Sushant came from a middle class family and was brilliant and aspiring to be an engineer. Fate decided that movies would be his destination. So after a short fling with uh, television, he moved into uh, Bollywood. He also had a brief affair with a lady called Ankita Lok Lokhandwale, uh, a small TV actress. And also during this time, he came, to, uh, came in touch with Sandeep Singh, a Bihari like him. But after that, he lost touch with him. As a person, he was a devout Shiva Bhatt. He was a pure soul who wanted to achieve many things in life and also contribute back to society. He had simple tastes, as expressed by the people close to him. We are talking about people like his bodyguard, his servant, you know, and his, uh, uh, the bo boys who used to help him. He was happy with a simple plate of you know, Indian food and ordinary clothes. He was multidimensional. In the mornings, he would chant the uh, Sh Shiva Mantra, of, uh, Shiva Mantra for 10 minutes when his staff used to all gather around him, meditating. We are talking of a very evolved soul. In no, in, in no way can uh, uh, any, any actor, be it Akshay, Amir, Shah Rukh Khan, or Amitabh, come near him because he was a pure soul. A fitness freak, he would jog and gym for hours to prepare his body for the roles he played so convincingly. He did transcendental meditation, yoga, sang bhajans. He used to discuss astrophysics, astronomy, quantum physics, with experts from around the world. He played table tennis and also painted. He had a bucket list of 50 things he wanted to achieve, some of which he did. He was not only a dreamer, but he was also an achiever. And this sort of qualities can frighten people. 
people who feel see him as a threat that he gave 100% to everything that he did or shown in his performances whether it was as a cricketer or a middle aged man in chichori when he felt low he would go to the farm house where he had a big statue of shiva he would relax there meditate and enjoy nature he mentioned that i love computer gaming and always wanted to learn that language behind it so for the past weeks i have been le- trying to learn coding now this is not a simple thing an actor learning coding is not easy sushant st- shared a picture from his diary where he used code lang- coded language he cracked the ai uh, tech map uh, app for detecting corona also he had the copyrights for the same he was working on a next generation gaming app and that was ready to launch and was working on vr technology which was still in progress so on the side he was also busy designing a next generation gaming app with a person called samir bangar co-founder of indian games which would generate 200 billion dollars within the first year of its launch they had tied up with an american company to launch it this samir bangar died a few hours after sushant died on the very same day in a mobile accident it came as a shock to everybody who knew him simultaneously as destiny had it another boy from bihar called guddu moved to mumbai to pursue his future according to press reports he was the son of a dancer in a red light area in muzaffarpur bihar when she was accidentally shot in her leg in 1989 as a result of a gang war she decided to take her son and daughter to mumbai a house uh, they stayed in a house very close to daud sisters homes guddu gave tuitions and sold ice cream to make some money he is then said to have sold tickets in black by buying all the tickets in the theater near him he wanted to become rich quickly because of his love for films he got associated with a film magazine and then a radio station the good do we are speaking about is sandeep singh so all the claims about his uh, college mates calling him uh, during sushant's death in interviews seems like a big lie he next associated himself with a producer who was alleged to be into drugs the sale of drugs in a big way and thus he started peddling drugs it was also reported that he got involved in child trafficking He was once exposed in a paper report for molesting a young boy in a hotel in Mauritius. During his radio days, he met people like Anand Pandit and Bansali, who later made him the CEO of his production house. He co-produced big banners like Rowdy Rathod, Shireen Farhat ki to nikal padi, Ram Leela, Mary Com, and television series like Saraswati Chandra. He later went on to direct Aligarh, Sarabdeep. bhumi and pm narendra modi it was obvious that he was being funded by people associated with the underworld which would mean money from drug supply and human trafficking otherwise he could not feature top stars in his films whose fees are in crores the third character who would play an important role in sushant's life in a negative sense was an aspiring actress who tried to make it in films but all her movies flopped one after the other riya chakravarti it is said that she also got into procuring drugs and distributing them she and her brother consumed drugs as well which is now in the open it is reported that during this time a middle aged actress started an escort service when she could no longer act in this in this uh, uh, job as a uh, you know a, a mistress she would identify failed actresses and entice them with big money her job was to send women to parties and make them spend the night with the men there because of the number of contacts this lady had her business flourished it is also reported that she identified riya chakravarti who also joined her and became popular riya had the added advantage of procuring drugs for these events So coming back to the Sushant story, Sushant also was finding his way into Bollywood and making contacts with superstars like Salman Khan from 
Because of his talent, he got many movies. But he was not the typical Bollywood star who attended parties or award functions and hung around with superstars. He was his own man with his own likes and dislikes, which is a very rare thing in Bollywood. In a world where people mimicked stars like Amitabh Bachchan in whatever he did, Sushant was a different man. The people close to Salman were his protege, Suraj Pancholi, and Imtiaz Khatri, who was supposed to be directly connected to, to the underworld. Salman Khan had the reputation of helping newcomers by launching them in films. So he offered a role to Sushant in his upcoming film. The story of Sushant Singh Rajput actually starts from here. Director Vivek Agnihotri clearly tweeted, saying that SSR, had an argument with the star protege, which is Su Suraj, whom the star had launched. The star lost his temper and threatened uh, Sushant that he would finish his career like he did the others. And he's being protected by the Ma Mumbai police and the Maharashtra government. This played an important role in his elimination. So the partial destruction of Sushant was on the cards after the incident at Salman's farmhouse on his birthday where Sushant and uh, Suraj got into a bitter fight and Salman had to separate them. Later, he phoned Sushant and asked him the reason. After this, Salman decided to remove him from his film. And this did not stop there. He took one step further. Instructions were given to seven big production homes to ban him from films and go to and to restrict him to TV series. The punishment for rebellion had started. This was not all. The Bollywood fraternity then began to snub him openly at events. If you look at the I-5 uh, award function, which went uh, viral, where actors like um, Salman, Varun Dhawan, uh, Shaheed Kapoor openly ignored Sushant. And one of them even kicked him when he was dancing. Shows how they, their jealousy towards him, followed by many other events like Karan Johar's uh, uh, coffee chats, where he did not lose the opportunity to snub Sushant. But his total destruction happened because Sushant was getting rich very fast and was not playing to the tunes of the underworld. Everything about Sushant's projects and finances were being handled by Shruti Modi in Cornerstone. And then this was taken over by Disha Salia. This was Banti's company. In, and Banti is, as you know, Suhail Khan's brother-in-law. Therefore, Sushant's growing wealth, his AI projects, his patents were all under open scrutiny at Cornerstone. There were many people watching this. Remember, when Bunty was investigated by ED, it would have been in this concern. It is clear that the underworld wanted access to the huge money that his patents and his dream project would bring in and also to siphon whatever else he had. So as the situation became ripe for the enemies to swoop in with their agenda, the stage was thus set to completely destroy the man who seemed to threaten all the top actors and their patrons with his new age ideas, his don't care attitude and his uh, uh, talent. They wanted access to the millions that he was creating as an AI apps. The next step was to identify the man who would put the mission in motion with ease, someone who no one would suspect. Eyes moved to Sandeep Singh. He had become a frequent visitor at Zarina Wahab's house because she had played the role of a mother in the Narendra movie, uh, Modi movie. Thus, he became close to Suraj Pancholi, her son, who was accused in the Jiya Khan murder as per his, her mother. Sandeep was also from Bihar. Uh, someone who Sushant could be comfortable with and had known for some time when he was actually doing TV serials. Salman already knew Rhea, who was also close with his sister, Arpita. She was, as, uh, in fact, Rhea was being managed by one agency. So the plan would have been to use Sandeep and Rhea, one from outside and one from inside Sushant's life. Sandeep and C uh, Rhea were like birds of a feather, cold, greedy and ambitious at any cost. To entice her, Sandeep made his producer friend give her a big movie like Chehre, opposite Amitabh Bachchan. 
which was to be released in April this year. But it was, on, uh, it was kept on hold. For Rhea, films, money and fame was the carrot stick that Sandeep held out for her. Rhea was formally introduced to Sushant by PR Rohini Ayer. As I told you before, everyone is connected in this chain. Havala companies, talent companies, brand management companies, PR companies, media and critics. During the shooting of Kedarnath, Sushant and Sara Ali Khan became rather close and fell in love. And both of them would often be seen together with their common friend, Ria. Whether uh, Sara faked love for Sushant to promote her movie is questionable. But Sushant's love was for Ria. When Sushant realized that his PR company owned by Rohini Ayer was promoting Sara Ali Khan more than him, he got upset. And he dissociated himself from this company. The PR then goes on overdrive to destroy him. At the PR's behest, blind articles were written about him to make him appear as if he was an angry, frustrated man who sexually abused women and was depressed. This was going on in full swing. And friendly writers like Rajiv Masant helped in this concern. So during this low period, Ria took the opportunity to fill the void that Sara left. Because it is at this point, remember, remember that Saif uh, threatened, uh, threatened uh, Sushant and made him leave Sara. So it was during this time that Priya came in with her sympathy and love. She slowly won over Sushant, making him feel secure. On his part, he began to trust her because she seemed to come from a simple middle class family. He did not realize that she was being planted in his life to destroy him. Ria's next step was to start isolating him and addicting him so, uh, with drugs so as to control him completely. Thus, the European trip was planned. In fact, it is said that Ria refused a very big film to fulfill this job that was assigned to her. In the European trip, Sushant was most vulnerable because no one was watching them. The experiment with drugs started here because when he returned, Many people he knew mentioned he looked changed, weak and aloof. Then he was kept in Ria's house for three months as per a neighbor's account, where dosage of drugs would have been raised and monitored by her own father, who is a doctor. There, that he asked, the father asked for drugs is revealed in Showick's verified chats. When the three months were over, Ria takes him to Waterstone Resort to continue the drug. The fact is that if one is subjected to synthetic drugs for a prolonged period of even one month, then a person can exhibit clinical depression or bipolarity. A person already having anxiety attacks will be more prone to it. So the shopping for doctors started in order to malign Sushant's image and make everyone understand that he was seriously depressed or bipolar. Remember, this was the time when his family was kept at bay and Ria was in control of his finances. She was siphoning money for her extravagant expenses, 15 trips to Goa every month, tuitions for her brother. This was a bonus for her, enjoying his wealth with her family. At this point, Ria ensured that no one would contact Sushant without her knowledge. She would manage his phone calls. His friends and family had complained about this in many interviews. When they came out of Waterstone Resort, they moved to a flat near Bandra that was isolated. It had neither security nor easy access to others. Some, te some tell us that the flat belonged to Amir Khan's uncle. This has to be verified. It was like a solitary confinement for Sushant. So the mission was in full process. This, and this was also done on the pretext that Sushant's own flat was haunted. At this point, uh, Sandeep would have made uh, Ria change Sushant's star so that she could control them completely. People like Samuel Miranda, Dipesh Savan, Siddharth Pitani, who uh, Ria had worked with in a Telugu, uh, met when she was working in a Telugu film, were all brought in. It can be noted here that 
Deepesh was kept as a servant when he was not one. He was a drug peddler, and it has been reported that he worked with Suraj Bancholi for some time. Later, he began procuring drugs for Riya to feed Sushant and herself. During this time, Riya would have been building up evidences to show Sushant was truly deranged and undergoing medical treatment. Thus, she took short videos, all shot by her or by Pitani, which were circulated to some media-friendly channels like ZTV. Everything was well orchestrated. The videos, the chats where she calls him Babu. This was also the time to siphon his savings by creating companies like Insight, the people like Varun Mathur, who were associated with Salman Khan's companies, and Vivid Rage Reality and Front India for World Foundation, where Ria and Shovik were partners. These companies, as you know, came under the ED scanner for money laundering. Sushant wanted to create intellectual properties based on virtual reality. He was on another plane, 3D printing and artificial intelligence to create and distribute IP in the areas of content and communication, health and holistic wellness, education and learning. The firm uh, estimated uh, project investments worth of rupees 300 crores going into the company in the first two years, and that a good part of the investment would come from the partners. So Sushant invested money into this company. Meanwhile, the plan to destroy Sushant was planned so well that Sandeep dissociated himself completely from the scene by saying that he was busy making the movie Narendra movie, uh, Narendra Modi, and had no con uh, contact with Sushant at all. He was preparing himself for uh, a scrutiny, a scrutiny in future after Sushant's death. A very intelligent and cunning man. Uh, you cannot find this kind of character very often. Even before Riya entered the scene, Sushant was already in the grip of people like Intiaz Khatri. And many videos in 2017 reveal this. In one video at a Halloween party hosted by Gauri Khan, everyone is seen entering the party while Sushant was being led out by some shady characters and being guided into a car. We know the film world is prone to extortion from the underworld. So he was under this kind of uh, pressure already. Anyway, it is during this time that Rhea came in that Disha was given the job of handling Sushant's profile as a manager in Cornerstone, owned by Bunty. She is the fourth person in, this, in Sushant's case. Earlier, it was Shruti Modi who managed Sushant. It is said that Disha brought Sushant many films and had a very good relationship with him. Disha had managed Aishwarya Rai for two years and Sandeep Singh knew her from early days. She was living with her boyfriend, Rohan Rai, an aspiring actor who was being given some work by Ikta Kapoor. The fatal day when Disha was called for the party, we're talking about June 7th, her mother said she was worried as she had lost an assignment of managing Ranbir Kapoor's portfolio. So she was a bit depressed and that she was not keen to go for the party. But someone had persuaded her to go. Either it could have been her boss, which is Bunty, or the hostess, or through uh, her friends, or even Rohit. This, this party happened on 7th, and the party was at a farmhouse of a well-known woman producer. So she would have gone with her boyfriend, Rohan, for the party. The party was attended by uh, big wigs, two Bollywood biggies, a politician, a builder, and many others. Here, it is reported there was something that happened that upset Disha very much. Something to do with child prostitution. Disha was able to talk to a 13-year-old girl from the group there and give her contact details, and also that of Sushant. This was in order to give a press conference and expose what was happening. At which point, Rohan would have dissuaded her, knowing that she would uh, jeopardize his family, pro uh, his film prospects if he upset the hostess because he had only started getting some films. During this time, she may have also informed Sushant about what was happening at the party. Sushant in turn would have informed Rhea, who would have then tipped Shovik, who in turn, who was at the party, who in turn would have tipped Sandeep Singh. 
as they were all at the party. The key people would have then decided to fix her before she revealed what was happening. Professor Rao, in a, a, a forensic doctor, clearly indicates that in the post-mortem of uh, Disha, it appears she was sexually assaulted, beaten, that her cheek was bloated. There were marks on her thighs and arms, which shows she struggled, that her body was later thrown down a 14-floor building to show that it was a suicide. In fact, witnesses in the building where Rohan stayed said that Rohan and his friends took the body in a red car. According to uh, politician Nitesh Rana, he invited people for her funeral the next day and the post-mortem results came on 11th. How that happened is a mystery. And then Rohan was missing. Remember, on 8th, Rhea had very cleverly left the apartment with Sushant's laptop and his valuables. This was to told to us by the family lawyer. And Meetu, Sushant's sister, came and said he looked quite relaxed and they did some meditation and yoga together, according to Smita Parikh, a friend. When Sushant got the news of uh, Disha's death, his sister and uh, Pitani was with him. He fainted, saying that they won't leave me now, they will kill me. And Mithu told Pitani to let him rest. After four, four hours, he woke up and repeated the same thing and was scared. He made innumerable calls to Rhea, telling Pitani that Rhea had all his passwords to his computer. And Pitani told him not to worry, he would change the passwords the next morning. It became very clear that Sushant had some very invaluable data in his computers, perhaps in the way of patents and other proof about the child trafficking angle on his computer. And he was scared that this would go into the hands of his enemies. The same evening after Mithu left, that is 8th, when Disha died, five people came and copied everything from his computer onto eight hard disks and also deleted everything on his computer. This, I strongly believe, is the motive for the murder. The killers wanted his patents and proof of things happening in their inner circle. Remember, all this is well planned. We are leaving the house suddenly with his laptop the CCTV not working, the gang of professionals taking his data and threatening him. At some point during this period, the young girl is said to have reached Sushant house and got protection from him. Now, this is what I would say is a true hero. Sushant wanted to protect this woman. Whereas all the, all the actors who uh, appear as heroes in Bollywood films were actually harassing them or using them or exploiting them. One very important point to note here is that some people had witnessed Imtiaz Khatri, Suraj Pancholi, Sandeep and Chavik between 8th and 14th arguing and trying to convince Sushant about something at a park. Were they persuading him not to give the press conference? And uh, uh, I believe that he would have declined that because his friend later said he uh, wanted to give a press conference to reveal some very important things. The problem here was that Siddharth Pitani was reporting everything that was happening in Sushant's house to his enemies and thus making Sushant even more vulnerable to attack. On 13th night, there was supposed to be a party at an actor's house, which is very close to Sushant's house. I'm sure you will know who this actor is. At this party, Baby Penguin, two actors and the same group had gathered. After the party, they were seen by people from the opposite building entering Sushant's apartment complex. This was the night that Sushant was murdered. If the reports which are coming out are true, this is what would have happened. Sushant was taken to the terrace and tortured, beaten with a bat, thus breaking his leg, injected with drugs, choked, by a, choked with a dog's collar and killed in stages. And then the minor girl too, would, too was raped and killed. For many of us, the marks on his body were proof of this kind of torture. After killing him, they would have hung him on the fan without realizing that he was too tall a person to hang so close to the height of the bed. Reports were given by people connected to this gang to not reveal pictures of Sushant's dead body. But then 
God has his own ways. One person, an anonymous whistleblower, thank God for him, taped, videotaped everything and exposed the game to everyone, including their chat about the fact that people uh, should know the should should not know the truth. We also saw in the video the wounds on his body. The video also showed people carrying an ambulance trolley that was too long, as though it had two bodies, of Deepesh Savant running away with a bag full of some stuff, of two ambulances, one which belonged to a Congress MLA under a category goods carrier and a driver who looked like a thug and was photographed threatening the police. Just the fact that, see, it was also reported that the first lot of police who came were just actors. They were not actual police. This added to the scene where Rhea and her family were ushered into the mob by Sanjay Suri and the paperwork being done hastily by Sandeep Singh and Sanjay Suri all became proof of something very foul. You remember, after his body was put in the ambulance, everything was orchestrated well by Sandeep Singh to ensure the body was hastily cremated so that if any evidence were, was there, it would all disappear. The team of five doctors who did the post-mortem also deliberately messed up and took collective leave before the CBI came. Even so, uh, at last but not least, the scene, in the scene of the crime, the apartment was open to all and was quickly refurbished by the owner before CBI entered the scene. It was also reported that Sandeep Singh was paid around 20 crores in two installments. And uh, not only that, 15 lakhs was given to Deepesh Saman. And this the police had found out. If this is true, I'm sure the CBI and ED may be on it. But the cover-up was totally unprofessional because of the arrogance of the killers. Some silly telltale signs like the missing key to the bedroom, the height of the bed and the fan not being taken into account and how someone could have easily entered his room from the terrace all gave the story away. Both Sushant and Disha's deaths have happened on 7th and 13th of June. Two important people were celebrating their birthdays on these days. I'm sure you know who they are. So were these murders meant to send a message to certain people? What is more weird is that Samir Bangara, who was a, a partner of Vishal Gonda, died in a freak accident on the same day that Sushant died. Many more friends of Sushant died close to these dates, which is all very, very suspicious. Now you may ask, uh, uh, why did the killers take such a risk by murdering a star like Sushant? The reason is that the complete Bollywood industry is controlled by the underworld. All top actors conform to their rules and regulations. These superstars, in turn, use a clever mix of their ill-gotten money political clout and connections with the underworld to intimidate anyone and everyone. Now, a highly skilled and promising actor like Sushant was a threat for leading actors. Since he did not conform to the underworld coterie, he was upsetting their ecosystem and setting an example to others. Thus, the underworld feared losing control of Bollywood, which is a 25,000 crore business. This plus the Hawala money, plus the drug trafficking, plus human trafficking, and the underdealings in cricket matches, which itself is another topic. Friends, as of now, every, everything lies exposed, and no one can cover themselves anymore through paid interviews in any channel anymore. Bollywood, Mumbai police, and Agadi government stand exposed, and they will have to pay the price for it. No PR company can raise their image however much they are paid. Justice for Sushant will soon happen. The attacks on whistleblowers continue. All of us are uh, dragged down by the, by the uh, dirty fans of these superstars. But we have to remain adamant to bring you the truth. Thank you, friends, for the brilliant comments which I always share on Twitter. For those who are watching this for the first time, please subscribe and support by sharing the video. Thank you so much. Good night.